What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna practice solving some absolute value equations, but before we get into our first example, I wanna make sure everyone understands this definition of absolute value. So if you wanna skip ahead and just get to the examples, go ahead. But if you're still confused about this, then hopefully this explanation helps. So let's unpack this. Absolute value of u. u is just some real number. So when we take the absolute value of a real number, if that real number is greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value of it is just itself. So let's look at an example. What is the absolute value of three? Well, three is greater than or equal to zero, so therefore the absolute value of three is just three, right? In this case, our u is three. Since that's greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of it is three itself, right? Now, what happens when u is less than zero. Let's look at another example. Absolute value of negative five, for example. Now what happens? Well, now u is less than zero, so the absolute value of u is negative u. And in this case, our u is negative five. So the absolute value of negative five is negative negative five, which is the same thing as what? Positive five. And this is the most common way that absolute value is conceptualized and understood is that the absolute value of a positive number is just itself. The absolute value of a negative number, you just get rid of the negative. The absolute value makes negative numbers positive. That's the most common way this is understood, but that's exactly what this line is telling us, is that if u is less than zero, then we multiply it by negative one, because doing that makes it positive, just like here, right? So that's the main way this is understood. There's another way that's useful in other contexts, mostly, which is that the absolute value of a real number represents the distance from zero. So this is zero on the number line. If I look at negative five, for example, the absolute value of negative five is the distance from zero. Since it's negative five is a distance of five away from zero, the absolute value of negative five is five because that's this distance and like positive three would be the same thing, right? Since this distance would be three. So that's another way to think about it that's useful in other contexts, like once you get to calculus and stuff. Okay, now let's jump into our first example. How do we solve an absolute value equation? What exactly does that look like? Well, let's look at the most simple one I can think of, which is something like this. Absolute value of x equals two. So remember, we're trying to find all of the solutions to this equation. That means that we're trying to find all the real numbers that we can substitute, right? We could plug in for x that makes this a true statement. We know that the absolute value of two equals two, right? So we know that two is gonna be a solution. But what else can we take the absolute value of and get to? Negative two. So we actually have two solutions. This is our solution set here. Okay, all right, solution set equals this, two solutions, okay, two and negative two, because when we take the absolute value of either of these, we get two. This is gonna be the most common thing that happens with these absolute value equations, is we are gonna end up with two solutions. Sometimes we can have one solution, look at this example, absolute value of x equals zero. This has only one solution, zero, right? There's no other real number that I could take the absolute value of to get zero. Sometimes they even have no solutions. Look at this example. What can we take the absolute value of to get negative three? Nothing, right? There's no real number that I can take the absolute value of and get negative three. Absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero, okay? So this equation has no solutions. So there are really three possibilities, two solutions, one solution, but that's only in the case of absolute value of something equals zero, right? Or no solution if we have absolute value of something equals a negative number. Let's really dive into some tougher examples and get some practice with this. All right, so here's our first real example since those first few examples were very easy, but I think we can still reason our way through this. Let's think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to solve this equation. That means we're trying to find all of the real numbers that we can plug in for X and make this a true statement. So under what conditions is this a true statement? How exactly does that happen? Well, whatever this expression is, we need to be able to take the absolute value of it and get three. That's the only way for this to be true, right? Is that this expression, its absolute value needs to equal three. So how can that happen? Well, this expression can equal three 
because in that case, we have the absolute value of three equals three, which is true. Or this expression can equal negative three, because if this two X minus three equals negative three, then the absolute value of negative three equals three. So there are two possible situations where this statement can be true. When this inner expression equals three, and when it equals negative three. And in general, that's how we're gonna solve these absolute value equations. Once we get absolute value of something equals a number, we're gonna say, okay, let's set up two equations. That expression equals the number, and that expression equals negative of the number. Those are our two equations, right? Because if we have absolute value of stuff equals number, then the stuff has to equal the number or the stuff has to equal the negative number. Those are the only two possibilities for this original equation to be true. So we solve both of these. We're gonna get a solution from each one and that's gonna be our solution step. We're gonna have two solutions, okay? So let's go ahead and solve each of these. Now we got the easy part, plus three, plus three to both sides. So these cancel. And what we have is two X equals six, and now we can divide both sides by two, and what we get is x equals three, okay? So that's one solution we have. For this one, we can add three to both sides. These cancel here, and these actually cancel too, and what we get is, here's the little arrow for the next step, we get two x on the left-hand side and zero on the right-hand side. We can divide both sides by two, or we could just notice that the only way for this to be true is if x is zero, right? So that's the solution we get from this equation. And now let's go back. One of these should correspond to absolute value of three, and one of these should correspond to absolute value of negative three, right? Those are those two situations that we talked about. So let's plug in three. Two times three is six, minus three is three. The absolute value of three is three. So this does check out and it corresponds to that absolute value of three equals three situation. What about x equals zero? Two times zero equals zero, minus three is negative three. Absolute value of negative three does equal three. This satisfies the equation as well, and it corresponds to that absolute value of negative three solution that we anticipated. So our final solution set, solution set is zero and three. These are both solutions. And again, in general, this is gonna be our strategy. Sometimes we're gonna to have to do stuff first to the equation in order to get absolute value of stuff equals number. But really, this is our goal. This is what we want because from here, we're gonna rip out that expression and set it equal to the number as well as the negative of that number. So let's try our next example. All right, so here's our next example. And in this example, you'll notice that we don't have absolute value equals number right? We have this two out here being multiplied. We have this seven out here being added. So first we need to get rid of both of those. That's really our goal when we're solving absolute value equations. We want absolute value of stuff equals number. That's what we want. We want to isolate the absolute value, okay? So we can work toward that by first subtracting seven from both sides. So the plus seven and minus seven cancel. And what we're left with is two times the absolute value of 3x minus 4. And what does this equal? 9 minus 7, that is 2. Now, I don't quite have the absolute value isolated. There's one more step, which is divide both sides by 2. So divide the left-hand side by 2 and the right-hand side by 2 because that's going to get rid of this number being multiplied out in front because these 2s are going to cancel. And now what I'm gonna have on the left-hand side is absolute value of three X minus four all by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. This is exactly what I want, right? This is the goal. On the right-hand side, we have one. And the reason I want this is because now I can reason about this. I can say, okay, well, how can this be true? We need this to equal one or this to equal negative one. Those are the two situations where this can be true. So we rip this out, three X minus four, rip that out, set it equal to one. Those are one of the situations. And then the other one, we have three X minus four equals negative one, okay? Now we solve each of these. So let's start with the first one. We can add four to both sides. Hopefully I'll have enough room to solve this. The minus four and plus four cancel. We get three X equals one plus four, that is five. Now we can divide both sides by three and we get this nice fraction solution of five over three. For this one, we can solve it as well. We can add four to both sides. Minus four plus four cancel. 
Minus one plus four is gonna give us three on the right-hand side. So let's see what we get. On the left-hand side, we have this three X. And on the right-hand side, negative one plus four, that is three. And now we can divide both sides by three. And we're gonna see that we get X equals one. So we have two solutions to this equation. I'll leave it up to you to go back and check each of these solutions and make sure they work in the original equation, but they do. And our solution set is the set containing one and five over three. Those are our two solutions to this equation. So this example is very similar to the last example, but there's a specific reason why I wanna show it, which you'll see in just a second. But the structure of the equation is really the same as the last equation. We have an absolute value expression, a number being multiplied, and a number being added. Our strategy is also the same. We wanna isolate this absolute value expression. We want absolute value of stuff equals number. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Let's subtract eight from both sides. So minus eight, minus eight. The plus eight and minus eight will cancel. So what we're left with on the left-hand side of the equation is three times the absolute value of seven X minus three. And on the right-hand side of the equation, we have two minus eight, which is negative six. Now we can divide both sides by three. And once we do that, we have the absolute value expression isolated exactly how we want it because these threes will cancel. So what we're gonna be left with on this left-hand side is seven X minus three, the absolute value of that, of course. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna have negative six divided by three, which reduces or simplifies to negative two. Now let's think about what we're trying to find here. We're trying to find all the solutions to this equation, which means we're trying to find all the possible real numbers that we can plug in for X and make this a true statement. Can the absolute value of something ever equal negative two? No, we saw that in one of our first examples we looked at. And it can't equal anything negative in general. It can only equal something greater than or equal to zero. So anytime we're solving an equation and we isolate the absolute value expression, and the equation tells us that the absolute value expression equals some negative number, we should immediately say there is no solution to this equation, right? There is no solution because it is not possible to find a real number that I can plug into this and make this true because there does not exist a real number whose absolute value equals a negative number. So I wanted to point this out because the biggest mistake people make is they then take 7x minus 3 and set it equal to negative 2 and then take 7x minus 3 and set it equal to positive 2 and get two answers and write those down. Do not do that. Neither of those answers will work. If you try them both in the original equation, neither will work because this equation has no solution. Okay, so be looking out for that. Once you isolate that absolute value, if it's an absolute value equals some negative number, we're always going to have no solution because that's not possible. So here's our last example. I wanted to make sure to show an example like this just in case it comes up. It could be a little bit tricky if you've never seen it before. We have the absolute value of an expression equals the absolute value of an expression. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this left-hand expression inside of this absolute value and we're gonna rip it out twice to form two different equations. And technically you could do this to either side. I just always choose the left-hand side, right? So rip it out twice. One, we're gonna set equal to this inner expression here. The other we're gonna set equal to the negative of the other expression here. So the negative of two X minus four, and we have to make sure to include those parentheses that negative applies to everything, right? So choose one of your absolute value expressions. I choose the left one. Rip it out twice to form two different equations. One of them you're gonna set equal to what's inside the other absolute value expression. The other one you're going to set equal to the negative of whatever's inside the other absolute value expression. If we solve each of these, we're going to get our two solutions to the original equation. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's start solving. I can subtract x from both sides, minus x, minus x. Let's get rid of that x here. So let's draw a little arrow for our next step. We still have negative 7 on the left-hand side. And 2x minus x gives us just x. So on this right-hand side, we have x minus 4. Now we can add 4 to both sides of the equation. So the minus 4 plus 4 cancel. On this right-hand side, we just have x. And it looks like this is going to give us one of our solutions when we do negative 7 plus 4 gives us negative 3. So that's one of our solutions. Let's see if we can find the other. So first, 
let's distribute this negative. Okay, let's just copy down again, but distribute, remember this negative has to go to everything. Negative two X plus four. Now let's see if we can solve this equation. So we can add two X to both sides. That's gonna cancel out these guys. And what's gonna be our next step here? Let's see, X plus two X gives us three X minus seven is still hanging out there, equals positive four. Now we can add seven to both sides. Looks like we may get a little bit of a messy solution for this one. Negative seven, positive seven, those cancel. Three X equals 11. Three X equals 11 is what we end up with. And now when we divide both sides by three to isolate X, we get X equals 11 over three, and that is our other solution. So our solution set is, let's see, what are our two solutions? Negative three and 11 over three. So if this comes up, this is a good strategy to use to solve these kinds of equations. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer. Hope this video helped you. Hope you feel more confident solving these absolute value equations in general. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, but most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see you all in the next video.